Hi, my Old Testament theologian is Robert E. Clements. He was born in 1929. Um, while not much is known about his early life, he graduated uh, with a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and doctoral degree from several universities in the UK, um, and had a successful career as a professor of biblical studies and Old Testament studies um, at various universities, including um, the University of Cambridge and King's College in the University of London. Um, he also served as a pastor at several Baptist churches, including those at Sheffield and Stratford-on-Avon. In 2013, he was awarded the Burkitt Medal by the British Academy in recognition of his service in biblical studies and has been named one of the most prolific British writers in the field of Old Testament theology. He was born at the beginning of the Great Slump in the United Kingdom. Um, he lived through the air raids of World War II. Um, and as he was entering the world of academia in the 1960s, there was a lot of cultural change going on, both in the UK and in the world surrounding. And this was reflected in the field of academia and specifically in the field of Old Testament theology. Um, whereas in the 1950s, a number of Old Testament theologians had begun to point out the shortcomings of their predecessors and offer new ways of understanding the Old Testament, the very same thing was happening in the 1970s, um, and arguably to a greater degree. So when um, Reverend S. Child pu published his book, Biblical Theology in Crisis, in 1970. Uh, Clements kind of picked up on that same idea um, in his book, Old Testament Theology, A Fresh Approach, which was published in 1978. Um, and he just sought to offer a new perspective on the ways in which we can deal with the task and the problems that the Old Testament brings to the table. In addition to this, he wrote other significant works, um, including God's Chosen People, a theological interpretation of the book of Deuteronomy, 100 Years of Old Testament Interpretations, um, and various commentaries, including those on Exodus, Isaiah 1-39, through Jeremiah, and several others. His methodology is very significant for a couple reasons. First, he put great emphasis on the communities in which the Bible is being used, um, and he saw that primarily as the Jewish community and the Christian community. So with this, he sought to reconcile the two main themes that these communities had begun to interpret the Old Testament as. Namely, Jews understanding the Old Testament as Torah and Christians understanding the Old Testament as promise. He thought that these two ideas of law and promise were what brought unity and cohesiveness to the Old Testament as a whole. Um, this did not at all mean that he discounted the diverse voices present in the Old Testament, um, but he believed that these two things were the guiding principles and themes throughout the Old Testament. Uh, so with this, he believed that there was kind of a hierarchical order to the different sections of the Old Testament. He used the original Hebrew text, um, leaving out those that, the books that came along with the, uh, with the Greek text. Um, and he believes that the Pentateuch was of utmost importance of all of the sections. Um, and this is the one that comprised most of that law category. Um, he believed that the prophets, which is including some of the historical books from Joshua to Second Kings, um, was what made up promise, and this was of secondary importance. And that writings was kind of a modulation on both of these themes, and this was of the least importance of all three. Um, he believed that it was very important to understand the way in which canon developed, um, and to see it as deliberate and intentional theology, as documents from thousands of years were being put together for a specific purpose. But he also did emphasize um, the use of canon in its final form um, and understanding that as significant as well. Um, in reference to law, he understood this as being um, the diverse collections of instructions that were given to the Israelites um, from everything from environmental conservation to the way in which they should treat their families and their slaves um, to religious rituals and handling crime in their communities. He believed that Torah was to be followed both by the individual and by the community as a whole and that it was a gift and a goal for the people of Israel. Um, he believed that promise was primarily found in the writings of the prophets and in the historical books. Um, and he believed that promise was made up of four main themes. First, return from exile. Second, Israel's reconstitution as a nation. Third, the restoration of the Davidic line. And fourth, the glorification of Zion. He did not necessarily believe that the promise idea started with Abraham um, and the promise God gave to him in Genesis uh, to bless all the nations and to make a great name. He saw promise more as... Um, 
the way in which God had dealt with the fact that people had not lived up to the gift given to them in the Torah. And so um, he believed that some of the promises and prophecies of hope, especially in the early prophets, were not necessarily all pointing to a great distant future, but were being fulfilled even as early as in the seventh century, according to him. Um, but that some of the latter ones were pointing to um, a more eschatological and uh, apocalyptic hope that they had for restoration of Israel that even stretched beyond um, what was happening historically in their time. He's quick to point out how these two themes were woven together um, at several places in the Bible, and they were not mutually exclusive throughout. So a couple of significant um, reflections on his methodology. First is, his theology was one that made way for reconciliation between Jews and Christians. In a time where Jews were not always valued for um, their voices or their humanity, um, he valued the voice that the Jewish community brought to the Old Testament, um, and this paved the way for other Old Testament theologians to pick up on this same idea and to wonder what this had meant to people, um, the original hearers, and even what it continues to mean for the Jewish people now. Second, it was very significant that he viewed scripture as belonging to community and in a certain context for use and interpretation. In this way, he thought that scripture was truly living and active, and that um, things that were being revealed in scripture now may not have originally been intended by the authors uh, who first wrote these things, but that was God revealing himself in new ways to people here and now. And lastly, it's significant that he saw a hierarchy within, hierarchy within scripture. Um, he's been called by some to be uh, evangelical, and it's very significant that he did not see scripture as something that was to be taken um, literally of the exact same importance throughout, but that certain places were given more emphasis than others as they were revealing different kinds of truth. And so ultimately, he's very significant um, and reconciling the Old Testament as a whole, letting the diverse voices speak, but also seeing unity within these two themes. Um, and most specifically with giving voice to um, two communities and recognizing what both Jews and Christians contribute to the Old Testament um, and what each can learn from the other. Thank you for watching.